Four, three, two, one. Three, two, one. One thing I like about the music that I'm see- hearing now is that everybody's so intentional. They knew, they know from jump that this is what they want to do. I think from my story it was always different. I, I didn't know I was going to be an artist. I didn't know I was going to be making music. I didn't realize that this thing was there. These people that are behind me right now, they are people that I look up to. Um, because of what they've achieved and I've enjoyed their music but they were never like my direct inspirations because I I wasn't an artist you know, I went to school I was like yeah I'm gonna study this study that music was not in my future until it was so I say that to say that I'm I will always be the kind of artist that will scrap a lot more songs than you will ever hear because I wasn't expected to be in this game but now that I'm in it I'm gonna get it right do you know what I'm saying like I'm so intentional about my music bro like it it has to be right it has to be good and I really don't I'm selfish I put out the music that I love to hear that I make do you know what I'm saying I can't I can't put out something that I won't be proud of and I feel like that's the legacy I want to leave behind man I want I want to I want to make sure that the people that come after us eh, are just as intentional about their music. You know, SDC. I think I was maybe DRB is similar because I came up with camaraderie. Most people when they see you or you're dope, after they realize that you're dope, you sign something. And that thing, eh, you're probably taking 30% out of that thing. Well, they're taking 70%. But STC brought me out in a way that was like, these are my boys. Uh, and there was no, no contracts. And they were brothers. But I was never part of STC. I was, they were just my friends. Yo, I met Wale. Wale's mom C and my mom C were in Lagos Business School together. They were doing a course. And I think they were talking about their sons that are vexing them or something because they do music and they send them to school to do other things and they're like you know let's introduce these sons that vex us so much might as well my boy just came back referring to my mom mom's like my boy just came back you know so introduced me to wale i met him and it what was it is this sweet sensation or chicken republic in gra and i played him a couple of songs from a project i had called hip-hop anonymous this guy first and foremost that name is hard hip-hop anonymous that's a hard name like what Hip Hop Anonymous, and then he, they played me Dreamer featuring M.I. From there, I was like, yo, these guys are dope. They brought me to the studio. I met Icon, met the rest of the crew, history from there. Yeah, and then from there, I dropped a track called Koyewon. From Koyewon, Feel Alright. I think those those two tracks are so pivotal in my career because Koyewon established me as this kind of rapper that, you know, bars and stuff like that. And then Feel Alright was a different sound. It was a groundbreaking sound. And it's funny, Jules produced that. Jules at the time, um, after we made Feel Alright, we were like, yo, send us more of this music. By that time, we were calling it Palm Wine Music. We send us more of this Palm Wine environment. Jules was like, no, he's a hip-hop producer. This is the same Jules that is produced, that produced um, Skin Type for Mr. Mr. Easy. Do you know what I'm saying? It takes time for you to realize the path. I think, I think that seed that we, we sowed with um, Feel Alright, it was such a game changer. I don't think we, we could have ever realized it. Just that vibe, that combination of this sweet guitar licks, um freaking easy going hip-hop rap and just fun and happiness could turn into a whole fucking i don't know the roots for so much you know so i'm just blessed to be a part of that blessed that i met budge elephant and castle studio mike recorded us i don't know if fresh was there i think um i think tenny kareem and um TZ, I want to say TZ, I'm not sure. Butch came, his hair had not grown. Went outside, went to go and smoke one thing. Came back, dropped that hook. I wasn't on the song then, but I was, pr- I was like, man, I have to be. Like, it felt re- it felt like something special. Yeah, I feel like it was, it was epic. For me, you know, I think, I think harmony is a good word. Yo, if there's no harmony first and foremost within oneself... I don't know how far you can go. I don't think you can sustain any any immediate quick su- success you have. You, this, it's just not possible because I feel like one of the things, and 
rappers in particular go through this is identity who i am and the kind of music that i make that is a powerful thing because once you and that are like this the vibes that you will produce nobody can tell you is whack because you you know where it came from you know and i feel like that took me a while that's why it took a while for tap to come out because i you know i was like i yo the koye one the heavy rap that's there they adore her the chill rap that's there the feel all right that's there all these vibes all these things i can do them but what is my own artistry how do i express myself and what do i want to talk about it took me a while once i figured that out it's like okay cool now nobody can tell me sh and for me i've been the kind of artist that once i found harmony between myself is like okay i like to i can't stay in the same genre in fact me my own belief is this whole thing there's hip-hop there's rap to me in our country they are different they are not synonyms for one another here hip-hop genre lifestyle culture rap verb something you do form of expression do you know what i mean and you can rap on different sounds to restrict yourself to one genre one sound if you know you have more is a disservice to yourself and to your fan base do you know so i feel like you cannot realize that until you have harmony with, with yourself bro like if you can tap into that if you can if you can not even just like i when i say tap into that, actively tap into that because it's easy to forget that it's actually easy to forget the path while you're in when you're in it when you're stuck in the studio it's it's really really easy to forget that's why the second layer of harmony is necessary which is team harmony the people that are around you need to be real ass dudes not not so hard on you that they break you down but definitely not psycho fans that they make you believe something that isn't true about yourself you know so but you have to have people around you that you are in harmony with that means you see the vision that are giving you real life facts and you know i think once you master that the other levels come which is you know this is a business understanding that you need business acumen there's a side of yourself that probably relates more with a lot of people and you make if you make that kind of music a lot of people listen then you start to understand okay maybe i should do this one more this should be the lead single because you know and then you have to be strategic just relying on um one thing won't work not in this space i think you need to figure out all aspects of yourself that relates to people and 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 give give it to them when i started i never used to freestyle ideas i would hear a beat i would wait for the first line to come to me and then the rest would be purposeful painful line by line writing out verses you know that was the process for me but i knew that i the people that i looked up to as rappers at the time were all poets elzai little brother um elzai slum village fonte little brother lupe fiasco eventually drake uh but these people are very imaginative with their flow so as a kid comics drawing me and my brother staying up late night making our own comic books imagination is huge in my verses daydreaming huge in my verses eventually what now started to happen was i would hear a beat freestyle a whole bunch and start to pick pieces that i liked so that i didn't switch from one to another i just added so that's one level of straight writing next freestyle writing next third one is just daydreaming the actual this song is about this daydreaming the characters and then writing from that character's perspective on on an entire song in fact fresh you know do you know i love this question because like writing is what makes a song um anything else see let me put it like this any rapper that gets to the point where they start to for forget that they start to realize a song is more about more than verses you know as a rapper we're competitive you want to drop the hardest verse but once you've laid that to the side that no matter what i know my verse would be dope but i want to make a great song you become a writer straight and and i feel like a lot of rappers are stuck with that verse did you hear what i said in that verse no doubt bro it was dope but if you don't realize that that song needs to engage them in because the hook is dope because the the, the bridge is dope because the melody the cadence you switch to is dope 
you you i i feel like the we're getting more writers these days though do you know what i mean and i think to throw a non-rap analogy out there that's what differentiates maybe an example like like a fireboy even though his writing his writing is his writing but the thing about it is enough for this audience to believe that yo that writing is because nobody afro pop afro beats relies on vibe not on strong lines but now that you get somebody that is applying some of that it's a game changer for so many people i love english language because there's so many words and so many words have different meanings and i feel like how can you not play with that it's just it's fun it's ent it entertains me to rap and write the way i do i chuckle to myself when i put a dope verse and i put a line together and it's a double entendre i'm like yeah that was nice that's cool do you know what i'm saying i write these things for myself and it, it yeah i enjoy addiction when you are creating from the place where you are very confident in your art and you're happy to do what you're doing number one you're not afraid that people will not like the vibe and two people will tell that there's an ease in how you did it I, see yeah that album see until kendrick's go kid mad city because that album see the cool was see that level of writing is super sane i ghost calls it a particular times like elite rapping that's elite because it it's painstaking it takes time it draws on your imagination it's like writing a book and you have to be consistently on it and in the environment that i'm in a lot of us are in the afro pop space which is predominantly the the, the, the music that we hear taking that amount of time we see it a lot of times as detrimental because you gotta you gotta have music you gotta turn it out you gotta you know your track you want to do four five minute tracks are you kidding me you know what i'm saying there's so many things that so many little rules you start to give yourself and that kind of writing is almost like don't worry one day one of my albums one day you never really get around to it but so when i hear it i i i'm gonna go back and listen to the album man that's mad or made me want to get signed for me it's really simple at that point in t at that specific point in time i felt that i just no i hadn't even dropped adoha yet when i first started to think i wanted more eyes and more ears i felt like <clears throat> i was literally the last like little generation actually no people still want to get signed but it's like i don't know how to put it I had done the independent artist confidently and in fact i feel like people still see me as that because of my mentality to my music but i knew i needed an extra push it was at that point where i was like the resources i need the res the, the economic resources i need have to come from a consistent source and it's not going to come from the sources i mean which is me a lot of what i did everything me koyo on video paid for that when the studio did a song called basically paid for the entire band to be there do you know what i'm saying like those things i knew were not sustainable so i was like i had to make a call and um i didn't i didn't seek out maven maven sought me out i started to hear rumors i didn't make sense to me because i'm like maven is a pop label i'm a rapper yeah but you know the f the funny thing about that jazzy statement which i don't know what he said verbatim but it was around the fact that rap it's not like rappers don't uh, he doesn't work with rappers more like rap doesn't sell something around that line rap doesn't really sell in this country around that th that kind of phrasing and rather than it came off probably to a lot of people as a condemnation but i think if you look at it it's probably like a general thing people started to think and I feel like the crop of rappers that I find myself in and the generation of rappers I'm in were slowly changing that narrative bit by bit, making it seem possible. And that's all that matters. Once you start to make it seem possible, even if whether you do it or the next man does it, somebody is going to break the mold and show their own path. First, I'll say, I'll say this. I know, I know when I joined Maven, it rocked my fan base. It rocked my fan base more so in that they were anxious and didn't know what to think you know and um as a result it was like it made and i too especially in the first i'll say months took a while to fully 
align myself with that's why your vision is key i'll tell you guys directly your vision is key because it doesn't matter the path where you used to get there you need to know why you're actually where you are and where you're going to next and i will admit that i faltered initially in not knowing because i said like, okay i've signed what the f is the next step that's honest that's true and yeah they did have a roster and i was aware of that i was aware there was a big roster and i didn't know a lot of them when i came in. i only knew deja i remember the first yo first time i walked to the studio eh? i walked to the studio with deja she's like okay I'll, one day i'll just you just call me you just enter she, i did that as i walked in deja just faded somewhere and i'm in a room i think bizzle was there um jazzy was sitting on the couch next to tiwa savage and i think baby fresh like bro like i didn't even the card of corridor somewhere i i was mute i didn't the energy in the room was not op, it was not it was it wasn't it wasn't mean nobody was trying to run me down they were comfortable in themselves and i didn't know where i fit you know it took a while and i realized there were some there's some great people there tiwa savage is an amazing person tiwa savage is somebody that will show you love you know and will encourage you jazzy is a funny dude jazzy jokes a lot and he's he is comfortable in himself and who he is and in terms of creative control i find that i always find that funny because i dropped man already as my first song on maven i dropped talk about poe on maven to be honest with you i feel like talk about poe was the final answer to the people saying do i have creative control how do you drop a project like talk about poe if if you don't have creative control i mean i didn't i didn't have anybody from the label on the album i had i had ghost i had thames at a time when there was no try me i had effia i had sadauda do you know what i'm saying afumbi shay shay yo exactly no you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you know what i'm saying like so to be honest i was like how can anybody question the fact that i'm i'm the one that's leading the ship and you know a, a lot of times what to be honest with you what jazzy and what the team really wants is for you to figure out they want you to figure out they want you to figure out within yourself where your sweet spot is i mean naturally they favor a particular approach which, which is you know give people what they want and eventually they'll see what it is that you're really about but they kind of leave you to figure it out on your own. And I brought a lot of what I learned from the independent mindset, independent space into that. However, I did have a label. I, I, but then again, you know, I, I don't want to say too much on camera, but 2017 was a tough time to sign. I just put it like that. It was just it was a tough time all around. I signed 2017. So it was a tough time first of all, in the country from 2016 because that was when the nigeria was, the, economically was rocked this is facts um so 2017 i don't think there was full recovery and so i dropped man already and because i have creative control this is further proof i have creative control everybody who joined maven drill dna they dropped like that like that me it took me months because that's po takes time perfectionist it doesn't sound right all times how are we going to switch this up blah 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 took me a while but i joined at a tricky time for music in general and for labels you know so i think that that slowed things down and talk about poe was one of the proudest moments of my career really and um i think that showed from there we transitioned are you down was cool i didn't know it was as big see when i went to uganda i realized are you down was a bigger vibe than i thought but talk about poe for me it really marked what I was trying to achieve at Maven. Diversification of the label, of the sound. And the, the way I made room for myself allowed what they see is as diversity in the label. And the push for diversity in the label. And realizing that actually, no, this person needs more of this or more of that. And the people that they signed after that, and you know the, the kind of people I'm talking about, had more room to do what they wanted because there's somebody that fought those fights and said we need this and we need that trust me trust me it needed to be done i feel like one of the strongest thing any artist can have is is a vision for themselves one 
to the team that helped them enact that vision and that key into that vision you know and and then and three you need to understand and this is the the thing you can't you can't you need to get an, a certain level of acumen business acumen because that's what allows you to exploit opportunities and leverage yourself in opportunities if you can do those three things you know you can pick and choose what form of um support you you have if it's a label support or if it's see that label support thing now it can be broken down if it's distribution look you the power is in your hands you do not have to go the label route or you can go the label route but take pieces of it see, i think artists more and more need to realize that the salvation doesn't lie in the label even if you're signed you still need to have a vision because they can't give you that vision they want in fact they want somebody who has the vision do you know what i'm saying like i can't imagine any artist asking oh, what should i do bro you're in the wrong profession you're in the wrong profession you need to know you need to have a feeling and stick to it I i'll say in terms of rappers i i like the fact that you said that had an inf like impact because it's, it's not necessarily an influence i i wasn't influenced by a lot of rappers in this space because when i started rapping it was not in this space you know but um one of the first rappers i heard uh was m because when i came you know my, my my sister had his album you know so i also heard nato um but not just because they're my friends sdc's impact is not just about their being rappers it was more about how they are as people and if you notice i am the kind of person that i will always shine a light on somebody i think is dope in a way that i feel is true to me because that's how i came into this so they made an impact on me in one that how they involve people in their circle that they believe in in the most genuine way and i promise you that is rare in this industry i promise you that's one two um relevance i study their moves in terms of relevance relevance is key in what they the reason why they they did it what they second palm wine third third palm wine fest right so that those guys for sure um i say the reason i bring up m is because mainly because of the brand associations the business acumen understanding that the long that is deeper than rap quickly realizing is deeper than rap and leveraging one's brand to do other things i mean in terms of other rappers that have had an impact on me like a direct impact beyond those two it's difficult to it's difficult to say because <sighs> you know i created my own sound i created my own style i created my own approach 100 percent. so the rest are people that i'm like that that's a dope verse or, that's a dope track or that's a dope video and i like you as a person but that's that's it if you don't move nobody's gonna come and carry you so the negative feedback man i just put that as more ammunition in the backpack for when i want to fire again i didn't mad yo but in, in terms of the state of rap i hmm, i think that we had a great year in 2018 rap wise i think it is one of our better years and i feel like it's gonna grow that said i think the lyrical based rap and there's so many i love what what i love right now is that our sound our styles rap styles are diversifying vibey rap trap rap the lyrical based guys are still there storytelling rap that kind of stuff a lot of guys especially when they do cyphers are heavily the lyrical based guys punchline guys and i agree i think the standard is still low there i think the standard can raise and especially a lot of us that are dope rappers we don't really involve ourselves in ciphers so you don't see a lot of us i it's not one of my favorite things to do i i find it to be personally i find it a lot and see i know and i know to say that as a rapper is almost taboo because especially because hip-hop which is who has its roots in america ciphers are a cornerstone here for me that was never my thing so i never came up doing that it's not something i'm really interested in and i find it personally every once in a while it's cool for for, for for bands but it's not something i want to involve myself doing so but the guys that do like it are just not that dope period yeah it's i think i think 
and, and 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 i feel like people like fresh people like me we do have to while we're making our songs making our singles we do have to keep raising the bar because we can't we have to keep showing that there's a level of rap that you need to attain before you say you are you are good or you say you are a rapper you have to be on a certain level there's some people that are vicious that are dope like first i i think i think dremo is a sick rapper i think dremo is a sick rapper but you, just like me and we're not going to we're not in ciphers you know and, and i feel like i don't know what it will take for people to realize that you need to step it up you know um but that's that's part of the legacy that's part of the work i think coming together in any form will always provide stability and growth and support in any space in any industry in anything you know um that's why people form unions and things like that and i feel like the reason why you don't see a lot of that with rap is because naturally everybody feels it's a competitive sport you know but i i i urge them to realize that the, you're missing the bigger picture we need to first increase the size of the pie before we all try and eat and i don't think rappers generally work towards that but that said though i'm saying that as if i'm i myself reach out i really don't i've always been the loner type i've always been the kind of person that likes to create in his own space and i don't really sometimes like, yeah, i jump on this verse I, I want to i want to but i've set my targets and it's like i i want to do this to do this and do this first i realize that i i if there's anything i want to leave behind is working more even if it's not jumping on each other's songs somehow linking up somehow doing something together somehow showing that yo there's a unit here i think that would be key i think i think i think i think we really i think we need to show a movement do you know what i'm saying i don't want to necessarily go to a show and it's only rap acts that are headlining but i want there to be huge shows in nigeria and there's a huge afro pop artist next to a huge rapper that's what i want to see not just rap shows i want to see us everywhere we need to one thing i've realized is that we need to leave lagos as often as possible we are underserving the people that love our music completely i'm talking about traveling within nigeria now we are there are people out in calabar there are people in benin there are people in port Harcourt, in ibadan that want to see our faces first you know what i'm saying and we are starving them of that because we are just in this small little um fishbowl you know trying to be the big fish i feel like that's another thing that getting together and camaraderie could maybe achieve however it's more than just that brands conversations like that but to answer that question the reaction is usually more than i expect always 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 when i went to benin one time it's crazy that there are rappers there Potako, the rappers there. The OAPs will let you know if you're if, if they're feeling you in a town. The OAPs are the best source. They'll let you know if people like your music. You know the the real thing. It's um, realizing that I had to be more um, open about how I express myself. I think that's one of the things that I've shied away from. I'm a very private person. I don't share a lot about my private life. You never see members of my family on my Instagram stuff like that. But I could do it with how I dress, how I present myself, how I curate my page. I didn't see that before, you know, but, but, but I see the power of it now because so much about what we do is, you know, now people is what they see is superficial. People will respond to what they see first before they dig deeper. In fact, they might just linger on the surface for a while. And, you know, I feel like as a, when you get into the business of these things, you realize it's just another thing you can sell. Um, the truth is about that story, my cousin, Damn, I don't want to say. Yeah, no, I'll be, but she, is, is she my older cousin, somebody that has always looked out for me and all of all of us. And she has been distant from the family for, for years, you know, not for a couple of years. And it, it hurts, you know, and she had always used to, one of her favorite jokes is like, yo, holler at me, I want to be in your music video, I want to be your backup dancer. And it was just a way of me, like, and she had sent me a voice message saying happy birthday like a year before, two years before, before the distance kind of occurred. And it was just a way of me, it was a way of me reaching out to her to say, it's love, it's love for life, you know. And finally, you're my, you're my, you're my music, you know. So it's, it's just, I love skits on, on music. It gives context about who you are.
I'm not a single artist. I, I'm not an artist that can revolve my music around dropping singles. And I think that that was something that was created by other artists and it suited them. Maybe the, maybe, maybe the Afro pop dudes, you know, drop a single. But for me, I realized I'm a, I'm a project artist. That's one. Two, a project is not just an EP or an album. It's, it's your content. Certain people will say, oh, my involvement in rap is one of the reasons why rap did something in this year. Triple Homicide Challenge was in January 2018. And it had maybe over 1,500 original downloads from my website, not counting, not just OK or blah, 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 of people downloading the beat to do freestyles and sending in videos. It was so overwhelming that I couldn't, I didn't have a way to finish it. I had an idea, but then I was so exhausted from Daddy Poe Live talk about Poe that I didn't come through and I feel like I didn't end it the way I wanted. But my point is, it just let me know and, I, and hopefully let everybody know that these rappers are out here and some of them are f sick dudes in fact one of the dudes i put him on the last revival sunday because i remembered him and i think that more of that is going to happen you know so for me like you said the energy is coming from realizing where my how, how i want to connect with people um i love my little shorts i love the lotr freestyle i love the little shorts that i do and it's something that marks my creativity and my artistry you know i, I just need the vide videographers to keep up with me but shout out to the i say one thing the big 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 shout out to maven films because they they believe in the vision and, and and they care you need people around you that care man you need people that see the vision first of all shout out to jummy this man right here waffles and cream um went to jummy's house a couple of days uh before i even i was working on the album was done and i said him like yeah i haven't figured out the album art blah blah and he's like yo bro let's talk about it Jummy and Fad on the gram, shout out you bro, dope skater, did that in 24 hours, literally, no sleep, just coffee and I don't know what else they put in their bodies. Like, he went down and crea they created those news articles. It was just, we were making fun of, um, of Banks yesterday, Miss Banks, in the studio because of how she'd say, <laughs> woo ah. <laughs> it was almost like woo, woo ah. I'm like, what? Water? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, T is completely absent. It's so, so, I mean, you know, I, I think that was, that's probably one of the most interesting things for me is just to see the narratives are not the same. Ex they're not exactly the same, but they are, they are from the same source in a sense that like Africans abroad, you know, I mean, their parents are Africans, went abroad, you know, born in the UK. It's a really, it's a different experience, bro. Like it's a different it's a different life, do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I still think that we face similar things and similar challenges, struggles, but to me, it's crazy how how different it is. I always thought it was the same, but these days I'm finding out that when, they, when people come to Nigeria, it's not quite what they expected from IG stories. It's a, it's a, it's a real life, yeah, it is, it is. When, when, when they're like seeing the day to day, it's different. Bro, it's different. Yeah, it's just, it's just, yeah, it's, well said. It's a, it's a music video. But I like the fact that more people are coming. What don't they show in the IG stories and the music videos? They definitely don't show the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> they do not show the traffic. You know what I'm saying? Even if you see a video of anybody in the car, they're probably playing Roddy Rich. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're thinking that as a bop. Hey, <laughs> they don't know. Bro, like I, I think I think um I think that's another thing. And the thing about traffic in Lagos is that it's becoming an institution in itself. And the and the worst part is that it's an it's dead time. It's absolute unproductive time. Even if you're on the train, if you're commuting in the UK or in America, at least you're thinking, you're planning, you're you're plotting something, you're coming up with stuff, you're daydreaming, you know, you're imagining stuff. Here it's you're frustrated and you're sh and it brings out a different side of yourself usually more aggressive usually less tolerant you know so i think i think that's a side that people don't get to see they don't get to see they don't get to see the transformation that takes place for a person that has been in nigeria for a long time do you know what i'm saying they don't they don't see that but the fact that people are coming now is so huge to me because you take away the experience and you, and you you go and share it 
Do you know, I think I think do you know, I think I think sharing is massive. In fact, you know, I think sharing has shaped our generation in a way. Without a doubt. I feel like every innovative or any any social media platform is that is the foundation of it. Is the fact that people innately like to share. Anything that they think is cool, anything that they think is dope, anything they think is scary, disturbing, they will share it. And I feel like that has shaped our entire and you know to the point where our generation well to be honest we're oversharers just check twitter you know so i think i think that's impactful i think the dark side of sharing is that dark side of, yeah short exactly it generates apathy that's 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 the dark side of sharing people share and see so many things so often that they don't care i think that's even scarier than having a strong opinion maybe somebody might have an extreme opinion and that it might be in many people's view wrong but i feel like what is even worse is not giving a fuck. that is worse you know and i think we're dangerously close to that the people within the society that are the least competent the least capable of leading that rise to become leaders there's an actual situation there's a terminology for that and i know that that's what we have here the reason being is twofold, I feel. Actually, it's, it's a, like many things in Nigeria, there are layers to it. But the, our, our parents have a point in that we need to get involved and blah, blah, blah. It's true. We do. But there's a, been a general apathy that's developed amongst us because it's like a lot of us, a lot of our generation are interested in expressing ourselves and finding our purpose and applying and putting a lot of our passion into that and it doesn't involve politics because we feel like our energy is wasted there because nothing changes and also because the people that are there now have been there for two generations ago do you know what I mean so I probably the worst one to ask this question because I I'm in the same boat as you apathy has definitely descended upon me but at the same time bro at the same time I feel like we're digging a deeper hole if we don't give a f in fact i know we are i know for a fact that if they're not members of our own generation who have been exposed to certain things even if you haven't traveled out you've seen because social media allows you to see you know if we don't involve ourselves in some meaningful way it's if you think it can it can't get worse we will be shocked it can get a hundred times worse and i just have a strange mix of being enterprising industrious people hard-working and but they they're opportunistic and then they also have now so and then they're now um, what's the word they are not entitled there's an entitlement coupled with the fact that nigeria is about survival so when you throw all of these things in the same thing you you create an attitude in people that that's why we succeed abroad because stuff the the road is straight the road is clear here you have to dig a crooked path to get to where you want to go and best believe if you if you get there you're not allowing anybody to enter and i and i feel like i feel like i don't know the where the light of the, the end of the tunnel will, will shine but we wake up every day believing that there will be does that make sense same thing with us who make artists that make music you make music believing that one day you'll get that break that would allow everybody to see you do you know what i'm saying so i feel that that same passion that i apply to music i hope there's i hope it won't be me that there's members of my own generation that feel the same way about the political climate i want to do something about it and you know what i will where i can't lead i will support do you know what i'm saying at least that yeah i think that's that's a powerful skill that's part i i just I just know that eventually the next step is creating music that is, is the, the, the verse is just a piece of it. It's just the foundation or it's the window or whatever. It's just a piece of that whole blueprint, you know, and, and I think that's ultimately where one needs to go because because it's on us. To, we need to make we need to make songs. We, our what's the, our outputs is never going to be the Afro pop guys because they rely on vibe are always going to be ahead. So we, we need to make sure when we make songs, we make songs. No lifelines, no lifelines, no life, no, no punchlines, just lifelines. That is deeper than rap. Anybody who understands that understands Laddie Poe one time. You know, so yeah. Yeah.
the Alternative Network. If you've missed some of our programs, that's fine. You can now listen to your favorite musicians, producers, fashion designers, and professionals from other industries on all streaming platforms now. 